All right, next problem up. Let's see how we can handle this one. So at first, we're going to begin with that question sentence. And it says, what is her total percent savings on both items? Okay, so this is a good problem to try to do because there are two ways that people try to do this problem. And if you do it either way, coincidentally, by coincidence, both ways are going to be correct. But I want to explain what the proper way to do this problem is so we don't get confused and try to repeat what would be a mistake later on. So to find the total percent savings on both items, we need to understand that to get the total percent savings, we need to include the total percent discount and the total amount of the discount in our formula. Again, your formula is your percent multiplied by your original amount equals the result. And as always, your percent and result represent the same thing. So if we want the total percent savings on both items, we are going to need to include the total savings here. Right there. So with that said, everybody, let's take a look at our items. We have a jacket for $120 and we save $24 on it. And then we have a scarf for $80 and we save $16 on it. So when we take a look at the total savings, we'll have $24 plus the $16 and that'll be 40. Four plus six is 10. And then one plus two plus one is four. So we have $40, that is our total savings. And then when we have the original amount, we're going to add together the jacket and the scarf because we want to know the original price before the discount. So when we take a look at the 120 plus the 100, or excuse me, plus the 80, that will be 200 that we'll place right there. And so now we can go ahead and calculate the percentage of 200 that is 40. And so now we're working backwards. But let me tell you this. If you would have calculated the percentage of the savings for the jacket alone and then for the scarf alone, you would have actually gotten the same correct answer, again, by coincidence. By coincidence. If you did them individually and got 20% individually, no, do not add those percentages together. No, no, no. To get the total percent savings, you will calculate with the total savings and the total of the originals. So want to make sure we are very clear on that. And hopefully another problem that you do will expose that too. But let's finish this one up. Here we are. We'll divide both sides by 200 here and there. Once we do it, we have a cancellation on the left side. And now all we have left is 40 divided by 200. So here we go. 200 going into 40. 200 can't go into 40. So I'll just begin immediately by putting a zero with the decimal place. Now we have 200 going into 400, and that's actually gonna be very straightforward. That will be two. So there we go. Our percent here is equal to 0 0.2. Now the last thing we have to do, per usual, is turn that decimal back into a percent, and that's gonna happen by moving the decimal twice to the right. That gap that we see right here will be filled in with a zero, so that will be my percent equals 20%. Again, to calculate the total percent savings, we want to calculate with the total savings and the total of the original. There we are. Our correct answer here is answer choice A, 20%. All right, new question. So the first thing we always do, per usual, is we're going to read that question sentence first. And so here, what it says is, if it holds 441 cubic feet, that's not really important at this particular moment, what is its height? That's the more important statement or phrase. So there it is. What is its height? So I'll write that down. I don't really know what shape we're dealing with or what's going on, but I know that I'm looking for the height. Now, Let's see how we can break that information down because this is actually going to be pretty important. If it holds 441 cubic feet, that's telling me volume. 
Remember everybody, if your units are cubic units, you're likely dealing with volume. If you had square units, that's area. And if you didn't have this here at all, it's just as 441 feet, that's a distance, perhaps perimeter, but it's all in the keywords. So let me highlight that for us. 441 cubic feet. Again, the idea here is that cubic units, that's telling us volume. So we're given volume. We're not trying to calculate it. We're given volume and we have to work our way down to finding the height. I notice right over here that it says a rectangular storage box. So we're dealing with a rectangular prism. And then it says we have nine feet in length, seven feet in width. We're looking for that height. So I think we all know where this is going. What's my formula? It's gonna be volume equals length times width times height. And what we have to do from here is plug in what we have. 441, that's the volume. The length given to us as nine, that width given to us as seven, and we're looking for that height. So there are two routes we can take here. Number one, we can go ahead and clean things up nine times seven, which is going to be 63. But quick question, everyone. Do we know off the top of our heads what 441 divided by 63 is? Not quite. So if you want to go that route, there's certainly, 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 um, you know, one way to go about it when it comes to just trial and error, or we can break it down if you can't use a calculator by dividing one thing at a time, because we're not multiplying these together. We're trying to work backwards to find the height and working backwards means division. I'll start off by dividing by nine and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right there, it's gonna cancel out on the right side. And then I'll just do nine going into 441. Nine goes into 44, that'll be four times. And we subtract 36. Once we subtract, we end up getting eight, dropping the one, and we get 81. Nine goes into 81, that'll be nine times. So boom, this division right over here, everyone, gives us 49. And then that's going to be equal to 7 times h. So there we are. Now we have a nice and easy way here where we divide by 7. And everyone, 49 divided by 7 leaves us with what? Yeah, that's going to leave us with 7. Boom, there we are. And the final answer here after working backwards is going to be 7 feet. But before you continue, I want to go ahead and reiterate this. When you have, let's go ahead and say square feet, that's going to be area. When you have cubic feet, that is denoting volume. And that was the biggest key here because we weren't explicitly told volume, but it was absolutely hinted at right there with cubic feet. So there we are.